Welcome back to Watching Film and Varnador Films. I'm Seth Varnador. I was a former college and high school football coach for a decade. Now I break down film here on YouTube with a particular emphasis on the Florida Gators. So after the South Carolina game, obviously Florida passed the ball really well. Uh, best passing game of the season. Uh, I wrote an article for GatorsBreakdown.com where I said that if you thought the stuff in the passing game was new, that you hadn't been paying close enough attention. Uh, I got a lot of questions on that. I got questions kind of um, in terms of, you know, can you do, have you seen all these plays before? Have you seen everything? Can you show us that? Um, got some questions. I talked about concept-based passing, so I got some questions on that, what that is, and why that led me to kind of believe and say what I said. Uh, so I thought it's the bye week. It's the perfect time to go look at this stuff. Um, now, I'm coming at it as somebody that coached, like I said, for 10 years at the high school level, the college level. So I'm coming at it from that perspective, you know, the perspective of uh coach for 10 years, perspective of a guy that coached in college. This is how I look at the game. Uh, other people may look at it differently. Um, doesn't mean I'm right. Doesn't mean they're wrong. Just want to share my perspective here. So first let's talk about concept-based passing. So concept-based passing is you kind of have names for collections of routes. Um, they can be quick game, drop back. You can have one name for a full field route. Like a lot of people will say, uh, you know, you want to run four guys vertical, just call it four verts, right? That may be your name. Some people call it Seattle. That may be your name for four verts, whether we're in two by two, three by one, we're going to call it Seattle. So I want to show a couple examples so people can kind of understand that because if I have two concepts and I run them both, and usually I run this one with something else, but now I put them together. That's not a whole new play. I'm just running one concept on this side, one concept on that side, right? So let's take a look at a couple things. So here's first one. So this is from 2019 LSU. Pretty good offense. This is their kind of pre-spring install. So you see the name here, our troop. That's probably the... Um, formation shock X Harvey. So shock is the name for this concept. It's basically a stick concept with a slot fade. That's called shock. Sean Payton uses that same terminology. Joe Brady came from Sean Payton. That makes sense, right? Under here, next one down here, you see sticky dragon, right? So two different words. Sticky is for the stick concept over here. Dragon is a common name for slant flat concept over here, the back side, right? Another thing that happens a lot in concept based passing is tags, right? If we look at the first one, we see X Harvey. Harvey is a tag, it's telling the X what route to run. So it looks like a hitch and like outside return route for Harvey, right? So that's a tag. So with concept-based passing, if I want to change one route, I can just tag it. I'm not running a whole new play. I'm telling one guy to change his route. Could be a game plan thing. Uh, could just uh, typically that's what it is, a game plan thing. Or if I just want to give a little bit of a different look, but the idea is the same, right? So let's look at it in a different way in terms of Florida, right? I, conceptually. The passing game is about landmarks. You want to stretch people vertically. You want to stretch people horizontally, right? You've probably heard the terminology like two on one, getting guys high, low on people. It's the same thing, horizontally and vertically. You want to create those stretches, create triangles in the passing game where you have a vertical stretch and a horizontal stretch, right? Florida does that quite a bit. Um, really, one of their favorite passing concepts that they've been running forever and was kind of the first thing I noticed when watching Billy Napier's offense. The first article I ever wrote about Napier's offense mentioned the flood route. So let's take a look at what is flood. So really tiny whiteboard here, but you can see the flood concept. Typically in flood, you have a guy, you are flooding an area of the field with receivers, right? Typically three guys, you're typically three on two is what you're trying to get. 
regardless of what the defense plays. And then if you get man coverage, you've got some stuff built in there as well. So the idea of the concept of flood is you have a guy deep, you have a guy intermediate, and you have a guy short in the flat. And you're creating this stretch if you have DBs here and here, right? This is a play they've run since the first game, the first spring game. Flood is a staple of this offense. You are high-lowing multiple guys on one play, right? So, okay, well, what if I do this, right? We're, we're talking landmarks here. So what are the landmarks for Flood, right? I just said we want a guy deep, we want a guy in the intermediate, and we want a guy short. All right, so let's get rid of the routes that are drawn, right? Let's leave the X's. We want a guy deep. We want a guy intermediate. We want a guy short. Don't worry, we have some film up. I just want to get this out of the way first. So if I do this, uh, let's edit the formation. If I move him here, and he runs across there, and he runs a corner route. And he runs an out route. Am I running a totally new play here? Or am I hitting the exact same landmarks? I got a guy deep third. I got a guy intermediate. I got a guy short. For the quarterback, teaching the quarterback, this is probably the best part of the offense. They hit a lot of the same landmarks in their passing concepts from a bunch of different ways. So it looks different to the defense, but for a quarterback, the teaching progression is pretty similar, right? As I'm roll, if I'm rolling out here as the quarterback, my, I'm look, my look is the same, whether this guy's running a go route or a corner, he's getting to the same spot. Whether this guy comes from across the field or starts here, he's getting to the same spot, whether he starts here or starts there, he's getting to the same spot. So my read is pretty similar. So conceptually, this is flood. No matter how I get to it, it's flood. The concept is the same. So when you have a conceptual passing game, concept-based passing game, to me, that's flood. Both ways to run it is flood. That's not new. That's not different, right? Now, with regards to Florida's offense against South Carolina, some of it was conceptually the same. But a lot of it was exactly the same as plays they've run previously. Um, so let's go ahead and get into the film here. I've got examples from the last couple of seasons of pretty much the same exact looks. And then if you obviously look at it in the eyes of what is the concept, you can kind of see that it's all the same stuff. You played a bad defense that played a lot of man-to-man. -man. So that's kind of another question before we get into it. Well, why did it look so different? South Carolina played more man, I think, in more – I believe more zero and one high safety looks than anybody has ever played Napier at Florida. They anticipated getting man going in the game. If you look at Sean Kelly interviewed Graham Mertz before the game, like on Wednesday, and Mertz mentioned how much man, how much South Carolina trusts their guys. So they had a good plan for man. And I think the second part of that is Mertz pushed the ball vertically a little bit more. These weren't new play calls. They've run these. But his willingness to, I think, push it vertical a little more made it look a lot different. And why did it feel different? Because they completed them and you're happy they won, right? So let's get to the film here. We'll show kind of the base concept first, and then we'll kind of get to it. This is just boot to me with a corner. It's basically flood. It's the same idea, but right corner. Uh, flat guy, intermediate guy, right? That flood play we just drew up is pretty much of this. Boot corner. First game of last year. First game of last year. Let's see if we get the same thing. Well, would you look at it? You got corner, flat, intermediate presentation may be different to the defense and that's kind of the spice of life right you got to make it different corner 
flat, intermediate. Doesn't look quite as good against Georgia as it does against South Carolina, but right corner, intermediate, flat, and then he's supposed to be chipping here and then getting the flat late. Uh, he gets out. Maybe it's skosh early, but it's the same idea, right? So let's look at it against South Carolina here. Motion. Got away with one here. Corner. Slam flat. Intermediate. Presentation different to the defense, but for the quarterback, it's all the same look. One more time. Let's see if we can get a corner or the deep third. It looks totally different, but corner. Pivot for the flat player, intermediate player. There's your slam player who may never get out. But it's the same look, same play. Been running it since game one against Utah last year. Corner. Intermediate, flat. Corner. All right, corner, flat, intermediate. All right, here's a new one. Well, not a new one, but a different one, right? Boot, now the motion man here is going to run a wheel. They've run this a few times. They ran it last year against Kentucky as well. But here's another example of it from game one against Utah last year. Not only is this not new, it's about as old as it can be. All right, so this one was kind of tough to see on the angle here. But what it looks like to me is inside release looking to kind of pivot back out flat. And then my guess is some type of deep over here and a dig. It's kind of tough to see the way this one's thrown. And this is a weird one, but you'll see pretty similar design earlier in the season against Utah. Compressed split in breaking back out. These guys coming back across the field. Camera work doesn't help us here, but we can see he's coming back across the field. Pierce is right back there. So, same play. So this is a little, um, this is a little Alabama special here. This is a 2015 Alabama look. They liked it. this. Is something they liked. I believe they call it spin. And then this guy it makes it look almost like I'm running a corner route, and he's going to hook up. And this guy's going to run a hitch. They call this hooker. They call that spin. But those are two different concepts put together. So you got dig, pivot over here. This guy can also sit. It's the same thing. Over here, you got the hitch and then the wide kind of corner turning into a hook, right? So dig, pivot up top. Make it look a little bit like a corner or a spray release and then turn it into a curl. Same thing kind of here. You got a dig. You got pivot. And then you got the spray release curl route. Hit the pivot here. Or I'm sorry, hit the dig here rather. Then here it is earlier this season against Tennessee. Try to throw that spray curl. Miss it a little bit. And doing this from a different presentation here a little bit. But it's the same thing. He's going to run the dig. He's going to run like a snag route from out here. So let's draw it this way. He's going to run the snag route from out there, but you're still getting that and that. Same thing. You're high low on a guy here with the dig pivot or the dig snag. And if you watch, you'll see him kind of break back out. And then you're, you got a horizontal stretch to the hooker side down there. Here's another look at it against Georgia. You're going to have that down here. 
that up there. All right, so new concept to this side. So this side's still running dig pivot. Now we're running slot fade here. We're kind of rub snap, you know, slant. It's really, to me, it's slot fade. Florida's run slot fade with a hitch here. Against man coverage, what are you going to do? Are you going to sit and run a hitch? No, he's basically, let's get this to here. Right, you don't want to just run a static hitch against man coverage, right? I'll run a hitch as he matches me. Then I turn this inside. This is just slot fade. Florida's run slot fade. Plenty of times. And we'll get a few examples of this throughout because they run slot fade out of a few different things. Here's another look at it. You're running the dig up top, slot fade. This is off an RPO look. But same idea. All right, so if you want to talk about the rub side of it, this is one that actually uh, you get a penalty on. But a lot of times when Florida motions a guy out, they really want to run kind of a the outside concept here but just try to push a guy out of the either push the corner off or push somebody else out of the passing window so here's basically the same slant slot fade look they just use this running back to bump out and bump this combination in but it's the same combination here you see you get you're going to try to get a rub here you get a penalty called, but you're basically running outside shoulder, trying to get a rub. You're trying to get the rub right there, right? As outside, as he goes to fight with me, hopefully get in this guy's lap where he has to get over the top. I rub underneath that. For the slant, Ford is obviously using the rub more against man coverage, right? Similar idea there to kind of rub, to bust somebody open. Then here's a look at uh, them running the dig. So this is something they'll do occasionally where I think they want to get the dig matched up. So just like dig pivot, when we talk about uh, landmarks, right? The pivot wants to get back out to the flat. They'll just run a hitch out there, dig on the safety, and then slot fade. So they've run slot fade before, even opposite a dig. Here's another look where you get dig and then you're going to get smash route. This is another one that can be run a bunch of different ways, but it's about landmarks. Oftentimes you'll see smash run like this hitch corner. That's the classic version, but you'll see Florida do corner flat. And you also see this version here. You got the corner. Then the pivot, then the dig back side. This is probably my favorite throw of the game for Merch. Really like working the pocket here, getting it. But you see up top, where do I end up? I end up in about the same spot I would if I was running a hitch outside in my corner. It's a good way to run against man. Here last year against Tennessee, pivot, corner, dig. Same exact combination. There's the pivot. It's a good way to run smash if you feel like you're gonna get main coverage all right here you go this is one of their favorites from last year double curl concept he steps up you see both these guys are kind of have turned to block but they're in kind of the curl window all some of these maybe don't have the all 22 for this year's south carolina game so there is some guessing involved, but watching it enough, it feels like these are kind of what's going on. Double curl again, game one against Utah. All right, so this is something that uh, this is something they seem like as you watch more. Hard to tell exactly what happens, but as you watch more of this offense, this is something they go to a lot. They like to go double move. And then he'll be a deep crosser. So if this guy turns and runs with a double move, hope you can get the crosser behind it. 
if you want on the double move, you can take the double move. So right here, trying to wait for the double move. Doesn't come open. It's to me, I think it's pretty much the same thing. You can see a little bit of kind of hesitation here. The other part of this is I think when they have a double move call, that's um, maybe not a slug. It could be all of them. But if, if you get pressed, you kind of just convert it into a go. Here's against Utah. You see the double move here. Then the over route. Best, the most memorable example last year, though, is this one where you get Pearsall, double move, deep over. Probably the best one of it. And then I think they like to go, right? So here's um, Sluggo Seam. It's a West Coast staple. Lane Kiffin used to wear this thing out. But you're going to get a double move here. He gets manhandled. And then the seam takes his skinny. He does a good job bending away from this guy and getting him to open it up. Double move seam. And then why I say I think they go if they have press corner here. So I think if this guy was rolled up, he would just convert it into a go. And you still have the seam over here. That's just a guess. You could run sluggo against press, but if you're just trying to get vertical, maybe better just to go. Uh, I think this was a similar idea right here, right? You have the hitch out here. He got pressed, so he converts. Then he just wins on the seam route. So if you notice, some a lot of these are kind of similar defensive looks in terms of coverage. Here, I think this is kind of the same idea. We got the hitch here, seam there, and maybe converted double move. It could just be go. And you have the seam route as well to try to hold somebody or if the safety flies over the top to get you that one-on-one -on -one outside. That makes sense, but it's similar. All right, here's a look at flood. We've talked about it. There's a bunch of different ways to run it, but right, what do we talk about in flood? You want a deep third, an intermediate third, and a shorter third. Creating that stretch vertically and horizontally. So, so there's your deep third. He ran a pivot, but he's going to be the short third, and he's turning out to be your intermediate right there. So, flood. Keeps it. Similar look here, even with the pivot. From LSU last year. Go, pivot, inside to be your intermediate. So, pretty similar. They And th this one, you tag a post. So, right, the pivot dig part is here, tag X post, which they'll do on flood sometimes. Here's another look. Ran it almost like a, this one was kind of interesting. You run it almost like a slot fade. So, pivot, he runs a slot fade, he becomes your intermediate. But for the quarterback, I got deep, I got intermediate, I got short. Similar look here. Flood, it could be the flood with a corner out. So, right, we talked about that. That's a variation you'll see sometimes. Right, where he runs the corner, he's in still normal flood rules, but instead of the go route, you got the corner out. That's the one that hit to Jackson. We'll see here in a second. But I think this is, might be the same one. Uh, and this is just a flood if there is no corner. You're just, you know, the simple, the simple flood here. You got the dig back side. Go, pivot, so long, short, intermediate. And then, like, if you get man coverage, maybe this dude can take off and do something, right? So here's the one that was the big play in the game. Flood corner. So he's going to turn like he's going to the post, break to the corner. So if you're, if you, you know, if you get passed off, then he's going to be, there, you're going to have one in the flats. I think it's Wilson in the flat, right? Yeah, right, because everyone's screaming for him to get the ball. There you go. Perfect. Drawn up. 
All right, so the, the basically flood with a corner out. So that's a, that's an example of a tag. Everybody else, this is kind of the normal boot, normal flood look. I tag X corner. So now he runs a corner out. And why would I do that? Well, if I'm getting man coverage or if I'm getting one high coverage, as he runs the post at the safety, that'll hold the safety. The corner may pass me off, right? If I'm running a post at this middle field safety and he's got deep third, maybe I get passed off. He tries to come down on the intermediate, and now I break back behind him, which is kind of what happened, right? Here's, I think they're running it again here. Don't throw it, but it's pretty much the same idea here. Throw it in the ground, but coming inside, he's going to break out of the corner. Out, following, flat, right? Same concept, ran it a couple times. Let's see it one more time. Don't have all the tags on it. Don't have that extra kind of intermediate guy on the front side here, but it's the same idea. Corner, intermediate guy coming across, then throw it to my short guy. And here's them running pretty much the exact same thing last year against South Carolina. So it's always interesting to see what makes the playbook two years in a row against somebody. And here's kind of the exact same look as this year's, except you don't have Wilson in motion. You have the H-back coming across, but you see here's your corner, your intermediate, that kind of dig coming back behind it, and then your short guy there. And, heck, they ran it twice against South Carolina last year. Here's the backups running it. And they ran a kind of a similar version against Tennessee. They didn't have the backside dig, so leave this guy in for protection, but you're still getting the corner. And it was really exaggerated here because of the extra protection. They really took it far inside, but it's the same idea. It's flood with this guy running a corner out instead of that usual go. Ran it a couple times against Tennessee. And look, they ran it here against Texas A&M. He's trying to get there. He's gotten blocked off, but there's your intermediate. There's your follow. There's your short. It looked so good early. They did it again against Texas A&M. So again, not a new one. Just a little wrinkle. Here you go. Nice little H scissors concept. So bring the scissors. So the coach Spurrier like this one, you get a post and then you usually get a corner from this guy and maybe he'd be your flat player, right? It looks like a pair of scissors at the top. Well, Florida does a little different and this is something that LSU's done that 2019 LSU team we we're talking about earlier. They did this. We'll have this guy run to the flat and this guy run the corner now. So the, the tailbacks run in the corner now, not the tight end here. So scissors with the H on the corner. They did something very similar last year against Georgia. And by very similar, I mean the exact same thing. There's your post. Here, right, let's do it from the pre-snap. Post, flat, tailback on the corner. Let's look at this one more time. Post, flat, tailback on the corner. Post, flat, tailback on the corner. All right. So, not again, not a new one. Here's Hank, West Coast staple. It's basically curl flat. So, you're going to have, and you can run it with, you can put five guys out in the route. You can run it three guys out in the route, but one over the ball. Curl, curl, and then some type of flat control, right? So that's this guy's creating the horizontal stretch, and then the curl routes create the vertical stretch over top. So you're just trying to find the open space. This is one I think Mertz forces probably should have dropped it off, right? But three curls across, basically the first down marker. Here's a similar look here. 
curl, curl over the ball, curl, flat control. On both sides, see the flat there. Three guys basically cross first down marker. Same play. All right, so we talked about, you know, this is similar to like a an extra zebra possibly, but it could have just be a playoff. That hooker we talked about where you're going to be in here. If you know you're going to get man, maybe you can convert that to a dig right here. And this is just something they tag singularly. It could just be a go. He could be running the post. It's hard to tell. It's very skinny. Uh, but I think it's that hooker play we already looked at. We can kind of look at hooker with the slot fade across from it. So kind of a similar idea. All right. So if he bends that in there, there's your vertical. Throw the hitch out here. But hitch. And the go is that there. But you can kind of tag. That's the cool thing about being concept based is you can mix and match things. You can put, and you'll see it when we get to the quick game here in a second. You can put two things together and create totally different look in plays and, and, and mix and match things. Uh, here's a little Haas juke where Haas is hitch seam. So the number two guy runs a seam. Then number three down here has a juke route. So he can kind of, he's going to sit for a second. Sometimes they say sit, take a picture, and then break back. All right, so sit for a second, take a picture, then go. Throws the seam. Here's Haas Juke last year against Kentucky. Different look, but same idea. Number one, run a hitch. Number two, run a seam. Number three, run the juke route. So same play, just a little bit different pre-snap look, a little formation, different look. Hit the seam. Here's mesh, right? You got the two crossers and a guy over the ball. It's kind of the staple of mesh. You can get to it a bunch of different ways. They run this one, the three man. This one I thought Merch probably should check out of. You don't really want to run it with three. You can. But this version was better. They don't hit it here. But basically, you got a bunch here. So you got three receivers. The back is your fourth receiver. You got a corner. A flat, over the ball, crosser, crosser. Back's the fourth receiver. Doesn't catch that one. So here we go. Fourth and two last year against Missouri. When you move the tight end across, the back becomes your fourth receiver. So I believe we get over the ball, crosser, crosser, corner back the fourth receiver to the flat. Now, this is one where you get the guy over the corner wide open, uh, but arrow takes off. Not a bad decision for him, right? But same concept. RPO fade. So you got, an R you got a run called here, but you also got a chance to throw the fade down there. If you like it, take a shot. Don't worry about the run play. Bang, take a shot. Don't hook it up here, but you did hook it up here last year. Same idea. Had the run called, had the fade option, throw it out there. Nice play. Same look. Red zone double crosser. I'm not sure what they call. I'm not sure what they call this, but they have run this, I think like eight times since Napier's gotten here. Uh, really like it. We saw how it works here. You get the good two guys crossing. Hanson pops open, throw it to Jackson. Here it is in game one against Utah last year. Two guys crossing. This was for a big, I think, fourth down conversion here. They are keeps it with his legs, but the same idea, double crosser. And then against South Carolina last year, same idea. Double crosser in the red zone. Pearsall makes a great catch there for the touchdown. Shallow sting. So there, like a crosser, and then turn it almost into a wheel as you get across. I think your back is out here, I believe, right? So this is the one that hit against Kentucky. Come back to it here against South Carolina.
runs at a time, drops it to the back. You can see Pierce Soul starting to make his way vertical here on the edge of the screen. Same look, shallow stain. Same thing as a couple weeks ago. Smash. Like we talked about, you could run smash from here with a hitch corner. You could run it with a pivot corner. Or if you're compressed, like Florida is here, speed out corner. Easy read for the quarterback. He high lows, right? You got two guys on this one, and if it's man coverage, you like corner outs against man coverage and speed outs against man coverage. But if it's zone, you got two guys on him right here. Tough for him to make that decision. Get a PI out of it, but they run this a few times, so here's another look at it. Smash again. Throw it to the check down. Smash again. Throw it to the speed out. Same thing here. Your corner here gets held. And then last year, you see it against Georgia. Compressed split. Same thing. So again, not new. Even the same formation here compressed with the speed out but they run smash a, they run smash 10 different ways but the concept's the same here you go double slant so this is one where when you get to the quick game you'll see a lot of times they'll go slant slant down here and then run something different up top For whatever reason i think maybe they expected main coverage or even if they start to get some too high stuff slant slant's good against that as well so they start going slant slant a lot as a quick game so Whatever you call slant, if you want to go both sides, it may be one word, you know, if I wanted to, and you'll see in a second here. So right here, these are all just double slants, but quick game. Right here, you got spacing slants. So right here, on the bottom side, we've called, on this side, we've called the slant, whereas previously, against South Carolina, you saw them called on both sides. And up here, we've got a spacing look. But that's just, I said two words instead of one. The concept's the same to both sides. So here's snag with a slant. And this is probably, you know, he's in the backfield, so he's going to run a flat. But I'm not sure if they have different words for double slants and this dragon, which we showed on the LSU side. But it's snag to one side, slant to the other side. And you'll see they pair these up a lot. Here's the look at it against South Carolina. Go snag to this side. Slant to this side. Just like you saw previously. Better bounce there. But here it is last year against Utah. Snag and slant. So, again, seen it before. snag and then right we've talked about the slot fade we're going to pair the slot fade with it so down here we're running snag so whatever their word is for slot fade and whatever their word is for snag you just let's say they call it snag and slot fade so you just call it whatever formation snag slot fade with the rub let's say you call it ruby snag Z Ruby. Here's snag with slot fade down here. This is kind of a little, like you want to talk about a tag. This is like snag and then he can go to. So like an extra little tag there, but snag. And then one guy changes slot fade, snag slot fade again. And then I'll show you a good example of them hitting the slot fade earlier this year. Right, so they hit it right here, get the coverage they want, they hit it here against Utah, get the coverage they want. Hit the slot fade. Same deal, same concept. All right, so this is a cool one to me. I, I like it. So snag, right, we just showed you a ton of snag, right? Snag was... 
and then somebody to the flat, right? So let's talk landmarks again. So the flat landmark is about here. The, the snag route, that slant and sit landmark is about here. And the corner landmarks your corner landmark, right? So if I run this, am I hitting the same landmarks? I am. But it's kind of like snag. It's almost like smash. And then this shallow, the landmarks turn into snag. So that's to me, that's the best part of the offense is in the passing game wise is how landmarks are similar, right? So here's another look at it. Snag shallow. I think he thinks he's running a, a like Haas, like a hitch seam or slot fade. And looks like Mertz was expecting the corner there for the snag shallow look. Here it is against Florida State last year. Throw the hitch. Here comes the shallow. And there's the corner, right? Spacing. So they run this three-man, four-man varieties. Here's a look at kind of a four-man variety of it. And they run a slant backside, so spacing with a slant. Again, earlier in the game, three-man variety, but spacing with slant. And another one. So they found some concepts they liked against South Carolina and were not afraid to continually rep them. Spacing with a slant. And then right here, last year against Utah, spacing with a slant. Earlier this year against Tennessee. Spacing with a slant. All right, same play. Then later in the game against Tennessee, same thing. Spacing up top. Four-man spacing up top, slant to the bottom. Spacing with a slant. The swing. So they didn't run exactly the same way, but the idea of this is right down, down lead blocker, then throw the swing, right? That's the idea. Down, down, outside, throw the swing with the lead blocker. I like the creativity of throwing this out there. And you kind of saw a similar look last year against Georgia. Don't use the motion, but you're down, down, lead blocker, throw the swing. So again, same idea. Here's Y cross or a version of Y cross. So another staple, but it's also kind of flood ish. You're kind of getting you're, it's similar landmarks to flood. A lot of times they'll run this guy on a post on this too, but you're going to get a shallow, an intermediate, and then you get a dig back behind it. That's Y cross. Here it is against South Carolina. Bang. Nice throw. Nice catch. Here it is last year against Utah. Nice throw. Nice catch. Here's kind of a two-man version where you don't have the dig attached. So you have... You'll still get the shallow. You'll still get the intermediate crosser. And you'll still get... I believe the post there, but you don't have this thing back behind it, right? That's not there anymore. So two man, still Y cross, still also a lot like flood, right? You got an intermediate deep and a short guy all hitting the same landmarks. So here's another look at it here. Deep, intermediate, short, nice throw. That dude's really good after the catch. Another look at it here. Deep, shallow on the short, intermediate. Here's last year against South Carolina. Deep, intermediate, short. 
this year against South Carolina. I think that's what they're running here too, right? Here, it was good. If you get some, if you get zone, this guy jumps in front of him. You can high low him. You got the horizontal stretch being created by that. Trying to open up windows, they end up dropping it here. Great individual play, but I'm pretty sure they were calling that look. And here's kind of a similar look at it against South Carolina last year, where you have that and you even end up with your check down guy right there and your other one right here so same look throw the push <laughs> why not for some reason but all right this one i'm guessing is this is the one i'm not quite 100 percent sure on here i think it's four verts with a check down it's also possible that it's like a four vert screen and he's supposed to be there. He gets held. So it's hard to tell if he's supposed to get vertical and it's, you know, or he's supposed to block and you're trying to throw that thing there. It's hard to tell, but if it's just four verts with a check down, which it very well may be because you see Pierce all get collisioned here, drop it off. They run four verts a bunch of different ways. Here it is four verts. There's your check down. Game one against Utah last year. So could have been that. Could have been a screen. That would be different. Uh, but, yeah, that's every downfield passing play against South Carolina. As you could see, every single one had been run before in some way, shape, or form. A lot of them in the exact same ways. So, again, what's different? I think they they obviously played better. They played a team that played different coverages than they've been seeing so far this year. Uh, guys won one on matchups, quarterback kind of pushed the ball a little bit more vertically, was more willing. Um, and I think coverage dictates that a little bit with him. He's not going to risk the ball, but if you got one on ones, you can get the ball out of your hand quick and have chances to make explosive plays, right? Uh, against the zone stuff, sometimes you need longer protection to make those explosive, and that's been an issue for Florida this year. I think we all can see that. But as I said last week, from my perspective, that's not anything new. I don't think the film shows that to be anything new. It's all the same stuff. So if you're loving this design, guess what? Should have been loving it the whole time because it's all the same stuff. Um, I don't think we're going to get as much to love this week against Georgia, but we'll see. Uh, I'm really excited to see what the plan is. Uh, last year, they were pretty vertical against Georgia. Um, not sure if you're going to have the time to do as much of that. So really excited to see what they come up with. Um, and maybe this week we'll get some new plays. Didn't happen last week, but maybe this is the week. So thanks for watching. I'm bearing with me, uh, talking a little X's and O's at the beginning and getting into some of the video here. Appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, help me gain the YouTube algorithm here. Uh, and we'll be back next week looking at the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Thanks for watching.